Come to the main Fiddle Camp Old Time Variety Show. We want you to know that it's time to go and join the main Fiddle Camp Old Time Variety Show. Break out that fiddle and bow. There will be music, laughter, bad jokes, and song. You can join in. It's for everyone. Come to the main Fiddle Camp Old Time Variety Show. Break out the fiddle and bow. That's me. <laughs> great to be back. We've got a great show for you. It's show number six. It takes two hands for me to do this now. Can't believe it. Uh, but hey, I, let's kick, cut right to the jokes. I got a couple really bad ones this time. Oh, uh, great. Uh, when do gorillas fall from the sky? I don't know. When do gorillas fall from the sky? Well, it's during April showers. Ooh. April. April. Pro. Yeah. Oh, that is really bad. Okay, what goes up when April rain comes down? I don't know. An umbrella. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, sh I should have known that one. Uh, oh, hey, uh, what day of the year do diesel engines like the most? What day of the year do diesel engines like the most? I give up. Uh, April Fuel's Day. Ooh. Okay, what was the Easter Bunny's favorite vegetable? Uh, carrots. No, eggplant. Oh, that's a rotten eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, we should probably get going. Uh, you got the first act there, Doug? Well, Glenn, with real main fiddle camp coming up, I've been in a reminiscing mood. And uh, we're going to start off the show here with uh, something that uh, I was very excited about w during our virtual main fiddle camps, and that was our creation of virtual ensembles. And this is one of my favorite ones. It features uh, Eric Favreau and the Buffleheads and Rochelle Aquine and the Boom Chickadees. So take it away, Eric and Rochelle. Ready, Bufflehead, attention!
Oh boy, that uh, those virtual ensembles we did with for virtual main fiddle camp were uh, uh, really amazing, and that was one of the best ones ever. And you know, Glenn, I really enjoy reminiscing about main fiddle camp. So we're going to have a whole s sequence coming right up here of some nostalgia from main fiddle camp. That's right. Uh, kick things off. We're going to have a great musical number. Uh, this is Ben Foss, who originally was just a camper in Mainfield Camp, but now he's part of our great staff. And he's, he'll be there with Neil Perlman playing some tunes. And then we're going to go right into uh, a fiddle camper submission of one of her favorite bands that performed at um, uh, Main Fiddle Camp Variety Show, uh, Gene Segura and the boys at Main Fiddle Camp. Awesome. Uh, and then we'll wrap up this trip down memory lane with a really nice piece that a local TV station put together on Maine Fiddle Camp a couple of years ago. Hope you enjoy. Great. Um, I'm going to play a tune I wrote called The Window into the Moe's Reel and Popcorn. And Neil Perlman has kind of agreed to accompany me. So.
Stay tuned. Play it well. That's what we like here. Say you're mad and you got time to shake your hand. Hit that jive jack. Put it in your pocket till I get back. Going downtown. Say you're mad and you got time to shake your hand. Hit that job, Jack. Put it in your pocket till I get back. We're going downtown to see a man, and ain't got time to shake your hand. adapting to a new reality, one that has, for now, taken away even some of the most innocent of pleasures, like sitting in a circle and playing music. That kind of performing is at the heart of Maine Fiddle Camp. The Maine Fiddle Camp will not operate in its usual way this summer, so it has pivoted and is getting ready for a virtual camp that's coming up in a few days. I'll tell you more about that in a moment, but first, I'll look back to what the camp was like last summer when we visited, before anyone had heard of the coronavirus. Before we could see the place we were trying to find, we could hear it. The woods open up, and there you are, at the main fiddle camp in Montville. Everywhere you turn, you hear music. Performed by about 350 of the happiest, most relaxed people you will ever meet. There are 52 weeks in the year. Where does this rank for you? It is my favorite week of the whole year. Why? It's just the music. You play from 9 o'clock in the morning until 2 o'clock in the morning. The main fiddle camp is unusual in that it doesn't just tolerate musicians of widely varying ages and abilities. It wants them. It's a rare camp with three generations of campers. Well, it works here because I insist that that's how it, it, it goes, and people really appreciate that. The all-inclusive, everyone-is-welcome philosophy is rare because in music, talent matters. Skilled musicians want to play with other good musicians, and novices may be intimidated by them. But here, every musician, whether five years old or 75, whether a novice or a virtuoso, is respected and encouraged. It's not like some styles of music where you're doing that wrong. There's none of that. When they get up on stage, 
and they're just beginner fiddlers and they've been working all week long to, to learn how to play some tunes, they end up getting the loudest and the greatest ovations for their performances. One thing you notice early on is that the name, Maine Fiddle Camp, is a bit misleading. Sure, there are fiddlers, plenty of them. But there are also lots of other instruments, some of which don't even have strings. It doesn't matter what someone plays, there's always jamming going on. And the best of it usually doesn't start till around midnight. You want to go to bed, trust me, because you got to get up in the morning, but how do you leave? How do you leave a great jam? Carter Logan first picked up a banjo more than 50 years ago. He's good, really good. But it wasn't until he'd spent a few one-week sessions at fiddle camp that he discovered something about the quality of his playing. Oh, when I leave on that Friday, the camp runs out on Friday, I'm money. I'm money. And then Saturday, I'm still pretty good. And by Sunday, I'm back to me. And it took me a few years to figure out that if you want to sound like you play 10 hours a day, you got to play 10 hours a day. In keeping with the everyone is equal philosophy, the staff and the campers are treated the same. Many of them sleep in tents they bring. Volunteers pitch in to help make the meals. Melt it out, oh, them beans and bowls, be no beans. And the chopping of vegetables goes more quickly when everyone is singing a work song. Oh, them beans and bowls, be no beans. It's not hard to see what kind of pull this place exerts. It's just nice to be able to have a lot of stuff to do with nice people. You've come here about a dozen years. Mm -hmm. How many more are you going to keep coming? As long as it's here, I'm coming. I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> the guy who makes it all run is Executive Director Doug Protzik, whose love for this camp is evident. Yeah, somebody's ringing the bell for me. <laughs> the bell rings not because there's a deadline or an emergency. <laughs> it's just that once again at the main fiddle camp, it's time to play. If we could hear, They've got a good thing going here, and they all know it. I'll tell you what, in 25 years from now, we'll just do the same thing again. <laughs> Well, they're not going to be doing it this year, and that's a little bit sad because, Amanda, I'm not joking when I say I think I have never seen so much happiness concentrated in one place as I saw at that camp. Just watching that and listening to that, it warmed the soul. And what Carter Logan, the instructor, said was true. He wasn't exaggerating because we heard this from numerous people. They start playing 9 in the morning. They keep going until well after midnight, and he said that really the best music doesn't start until about 11 p.m. And I get it, you can't leave a good jam sesh, you really can't. Yeah, no, it's, it's just, <laughs> there's, a, there's absolute magic when they're all around that circle, around that campfire at midnight just jamming. So the Maine Fiddle Camp is holding a virtual camp this week on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It'll feature workshops, jam sessions, and more. You can find more information about that virtual camp in the 207 section of our website and mobile app. And we will actually bring you a song performed by a bunch of fiddle camp musicians coming up in just a few minutes. And now I'd like to introduce a person who helps keep Maine Fiddle Camp going year-round, virtually, and soon in reality, Bill Olson. Hi, Doug. Great to be here in the Old Time Variety Show. Hey, Bill. Nice, nice of you to join in. Um, hey, you've been helping out a lot here with uh, uh, developing uh, our real main fiddle camp coming up this June and August. And uh, so how about giving us a report on how things are going? Well, we're definitely going ahead with live in-person camp at uh, Pilgrim Lodge, both in uh, June and August of this year. Um, the preliminary registrations have been uh, coming in. 
but there's still room for more, uh, especially in the June week. So um, don't forget to sign up. Um, we have been uh, hiring our core staff um, for all the nests and uh, they are already listed on the registration page on the um, um, Fiddle Camp um, website. So uh, please spread the word and uh, sign up for live Fiddle Camp. That's pretty much the long and the short of it, Doug. Hey, that sounds great, Bill. Thanks for the report. And uh, you know, I was reminiscing about uh, Real Main Fiddle Camp recently, and I remembered this song that you did that I got the biggest kick out of. I think it was called the Kindergarten Song. Do you, do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I know about that one. That was about my early education. Here I am with my accompanist, Pam Weeks. This is a song about my education. Kid, not so long ago, I had to learn a lot of things I didn't even know. How to dress myself and tie my shoes, how to jump a rope, how to sit for a picture without looking like a dope. But of all the things I learned, my favorite of them all was that little poem hanging on the kindergarten wall. Of all you learned, you remember this the best. Don't hurt each other and clean up your mess. Take a nap every day, wash before you eat. Hold hands, stick together, look before you cross the street. Remember the seed in the little paper cup. First the root goes down and then the plant grows up. It was first, second, third grade, fourth grade too. I had to learn the big things the big kids do. How to add, subtract, and multiply, and read and write and play. How to sit in a little uncomfortable desk for nearly half a day. But of all the things I learned, my favorite of them all was that little poem hanging on the kindergarten wall. Ah, all oh, you learned, you remember this the best. Don't hurt each other, clean up your mess. Take a nap every day, wash before you eat. Hold hands, stick together, look before you cross the street. Remember the seed in the little paper cup. First the root goes down and then the plant grows up. I've been awfully worried lately as I look around and see. An awful lot of grown-ups acting foolish as can be. I know there's lots of things to learn I haven't mastered yet. Yet it seems it's really important stuff that grown-ups soon forget. And I know we'd be much better off if we could just recall that little poem hanging on the kindergarten wall. Oh, all you learn, you remember this the best. Don't hurt each other, clean up your mess. Take a nap every day, wash before you eat. Hold hands, stick together, and look before you cross the street. Remember the seed in the little paper cup. First the root grows down and then the plant grows up. Bill will always remember the seed in the little paper cup. And uh, thanks to Pam Weeks, who was playing guitar so that Bill could nail all the choreography. Uh, Pam plays just about everything, including, wait for it, the mountain dulcimer. <laughs> we got to hear more about Pam and the dulcimer in this wonderful piece that the Bangor Symphony produced. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
name is Pam Weeks, and we are at my home in Bowdoin, Maine. Well, I'm an actively performing musician, and I also teach a lot of private music lessons, um, and that's what I do for my living. I'm a full-time musician. Um, I specialize in mountain dulcimer and fiddle. I first heard a mountain dulcimer when I was probably 18 years old, and I just thought it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard. I'd never seen one or heard of one before, and I went right out and started hunting to find a mountain dulcimer that I could buy and start teaching myself how to play. Dulcimer actually means sweet water. It's very unique. I can't really put it into words very well. It's different. That's pretty simple. That's a really basic traditional way of playing the dulcimer. As you can see, the, the fretboard looks like it's missing some frets. So the dulcimer fretboard is based on a series of scales or modes rather than, say, a chromatic fretboard like a guitar has. It literally is missing some of those frets. One of the things that makes the dulcimer easy to play is that you have fewer wrong notes. And one that makes it more challenging to play for certain types of music is that you're missing some notes and you have to figure out how to get them. It really is a true American instrument. Oh yes. Um, the person it was written for was David Schnaufer, and he was one of the real pioneers of, of mountain dulcimer playing during his lifetime. And so I was familiar with it from hearing recordings of Dave playing it. It's exciting because the dulcimer is not seen still as an instrument that is played in an orchestra. It's seen as very much as a folk instrument, even though I know some really innovative players that play everything from jazz to classical to rock and roll, and, and I mean current rock and roll, um, on the dulcimer, every kind of music you can imagine. It just is not in the public's consciousness as anything other than a very simply played mountain instrument something like that. So there's just as much range on it as you might find on a guitar or mandolin or any other string instrument in terms of how you can approach playing it. So this is a Tennessee music box and this one um, I made with the help of my bandmate Jim Joseph. But this is basically what they look like. Again, the fretboard goes from one end to the other. And um, the series of holes, the wood is quite thick because they just were using planks. It was nothing fancy, no fancy instrument making shops or anything like that. It's a early form of the dulcimer that was specific to Tennessee. And um, it's used for the second movement in Blackberry Winter. So that is the basic melody and the theme of that second movement. Fantastic. It's so great to have Pam spotlighted like that. Well, it's that time of year when we all really go for those sweet, sappy songs about maple syrup. <laughs> We've got a musical maple hat trick for you now, uh, starting off with... Oh, hey, it's Pam and Bill again. <laughs> this time they're going to be joined by Jim Joseph uh, and together they're Tiaka D. Take it away. Well, we're going to sing you a song all about making maple syrup. It'll be that time before you know it. This song was written by Dennis Pulaski from Michigan, and it's called 40 to 1.
much fun to boil it down and strain it clean and it's the best maple syrup that you've ever seen Yakadi man, Jim Joseph with that sweet uke solo. Well, to boil sap, you need plenty of firewood to make all those clouds of steam. So you'll understand why this next song from our friend Jay Bailey is Maple Song Number Two. Gotcha. And uh, anybody who has heated with wood might enjoy this. fall of the year when the winter's drawing near and the days are clear it certainly isn't good to sit by the fire and want to stoke it higher when you should be cutting more wood from november to march the winter winds are harsh and the field and marsh are covered with snow and you trudge to the shed and have to scratch your head because the dad blame pile is getting low on wood hardwood stove wood dry wood there ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without wood we could, you should, be out cutting more wood. When the kindling is dwindling and the bottom log gets soggy and those ricks of sticks and racks of sacks, it makes you wonder where they go. The barnfuls of armfuls only last a week or so and then you're hurting for wood. Now the sassafras, it burns so fast, it starts the fire, but never lasts, and swamp folk likes to smoke you blowing it till you think you hope. And chicory is just the tree to remind you of the ecstasy of having a pile of good wood. I said wood, hardwood, stove wood, dry wood, there ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without wood. We could, you should, be out cutting more wood. Now the Scandi and the Yodel brand are made so far across the sea, but fisher kind and timber line are made here in the country. But of all the rest that have stood the test, the one I like the very best, the one my uncle Wade he made for me. 
He took an oil drum and welded some pipe, and from the septic tank and fore and aft he cut a draft, and then he made a damper crank from an old broom from the back room, and he painted it fire engine red and said, Now watch it consume. Your wood, hardwood, stove, wood, dry wood, there ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without wood. We could, you should be out cutting more wood. Now the old-timers say you should split a little every day and store it away. For to season well, but from June to November, I rarely do remember, and December will find me in that rut. For when spring rolls around and I spade the muddy ground, I have often found as I lay my saw away the shed is empty, and yet you can make a bet that I'll forget to be cutting more wood. I said, wood, hardwood, stove, wood, dry wood, there ain't a stove in the world's gonna do you any good without wood. We could, you should be out cutting more, throw it in the oil drum, what do you think the saw's for? You will always need some more wood. Dylan Buston, that's the man's name that wrote that. It's a work of art, <laughs> or a work of Dylan, or somebody. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Well, to close out our syrup set, we'll get a tune from some young folks from up in Canada. It's Wilson and Lucy, the Fiddlers. Take it away. Today we are going to play a Ward Allen tune, one of Canada's favorites, Maple, Maple Sugar. Sugar, with our new friends, the Rangers. We hope you enjoy! One, two, three. <laughs> is moving to Gardner, Maine, it reminded me of a wonderful venue right in downtown Gardner called Johnson Hall. And many, many years ago, uh, Fred White, uh, uh, our guitar teacher at Maine Fiddle Camp, uh, hosted a local access television program called Johnson Hall. And uh, so it's time to take the Wayback Machine. First, I've got to put on my Wayback Machine goggles. Oh yeah, that's 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 good. That that really allows me to to see the uh, way back. And now it's uh, time to take the way back machine as we head back many decades, way back, uh, and see Fred White and also an appearance of Glenn Loper uh, playing for a step dancer way back. Way
where musicians all from Maine gather here to entertain. The audience is welcomed in. Cameras roll and let's begin. March and April, Friday night, share our musical delight. You might find your face on TV too. Call 582-7144. Pick up your tickets at the door. Johnson Hall Performing Arts Center. All you have to do is enter. Welcome to a live from Johnson Hall. And of course, a brief appearance of Maine Fiddle Camp Steve Muse. Let's, let's get specific on the old gray goose here. These guys have been together as the old gray goose for, I understand, about 25 years. Uh, <clears throat> Hard to believe we don't geez. look like we're that old. They, they, yeah. they say they don't look that old. In fact, they look pretty good for like 65, don't they? That's what not, was that? That's, that's not the combined age. <laughs> These guys play music like they're much older than they are. Please make them welcome the old gray goose. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Same night, Glenn Loper appeared some 25 years ago. it for this Wayback Machine, but tune in next month for another Visit Down Memory Lane. Whoa, that took me back. Way back. <laughs> well, the Pineland Fiddlers are also back, uh, led by Ellen Goller and accompanied by Ben Foss on guitar. They've got a great set for us. It, it starts with some jigs, it ends with some reels, and in the middle, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I kind of lost count. We'll have to see for ourselves. Let's check it out.
Thanks, Pineland Fiddlers. Well, we're pretty lucky at Maine Fiddle Camp to have some of the best Quebecois musicians around come down and share their music with us. Uh, we started the show with Eric Favreau, and next up, we'll hear a great set of tunes uh, from the button accordionist Saban Jacques from the band Tidal Wave, who's accompanied by his son Matthew on a bass that's electric in more ways than one. Uh, let's check it out. <laughs> Awesome. I can't wait to hear those guys live in person sometime. Uh, well, we're getting near the end of the show. I wonder if we can find Doug. Are you here? Here I am. Oh, <laughs> you're always there when we need you. Okay. Uh, hey, what a wonderful show. Uh, and I want to thank all the performers. They did a great job. I really appreciate it. But hey, we've got some more virtual uh, main fiddle camp and real main fiddle camp coming up, don't we? That's right. Uh, we've got a virtual sessions in May and June, and then right after that, a real live in-person Maine fiddle camp. You can sign up on the website. Great. Get, get pre-registered for that for sure. And join us uh, in our next two virtual camps. Meanwhile, we're going to finish the show with a Maine fiddle camp tradition of ending the variety show with a lullaby. And here's a wonderful tune 
uh, from Lissa Schneckenberger and Bethany Wakeman. So, so long, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.